Hi, I'm the Woodpecker today. I'm making this maple tree to be able to read in the bathtub. Our daughter likes to read in the bathtub. And to do so, she uses a plastic bathtub caddy. So last Christmas, I decided to make her a wooden one. And here's the design I came up with. The first thing I have to do is go up to my left to get some maple planks. With those planks, I will have enough wood to make two bathtub caddies. By the way, Thank you so much, Stefan, for providing me with this nice wood. But I still have a long way to go before using this. For now, I only surface one side of a couple of planks because I need to glue them together to have wider pieces of wood. With only one face and one edge jointed, I glue both of them together and put them aside. Now I can cut the longest planks in three small pieces and surface them too. As usual, after everything went through the thickness planer, I need to sand a lot. After all this sanding, my glue up is dry enough so I can finish its surfacing. Finally, I have enough wood to make two bathtub caddy trays. The first things I cut are the two rails that will hold everything together. But because of the sliding dovetail, I need to cut those pieces from a much thicker piece of maple. But before I cut the dovetails, I remove a bit of wood on the table saw. Then I cut them. For the other part that will slide inside this, I use a smaller piece to make some tests. Okay, it's obvious that this is way too wide. I move the guide and cut it again. And now both pieces are a perfect match. I just need to cut all the rest of the dovetails. And here they are, perfect. Now I need to cut all the pieces that will be inserted in those sliding dovetails. On my original plan, I was thinking of using thicker pieces of wood, but I didn't have any. So I'm cutting a bunch of pieces at 45 degrees to thicken the end of those boards. And like most of the time when I cut maple, I end up with a lot of burn marks. I need to fix this. And now I'm able to glue all those blocks at the end of the plex. And I just need to wait for the glue to dry. Now that it is, I'm not done yet. My glue ups are thicker than what I really need. So I remove some wood with the drum sander. Now that this is at the right thickness, I need to sand this again. Yes, the drum sander makes a great job of removing some wood, but leaves it pretty scratchy. That's the reason why I need to sand it again. Now I need to rip this so the side will be straight. I find the center of each piece and make a mark from there to the end. Then I cut all four pieces to this mark. Next, with a stop, I cut them all to length. Then I make the setup and cut dovetails at the end of those pieces. It's pretty hard to push it in place. Perfect. 
That's what I want. Those pieces will be glued together and I don't want a big gap. But I still need to cut all the rest of the dovetails. I add some blowouts at the end of the cuts. I need to remove this. To make the four cup holders, I will use a template and a router template guide. But first of all, I need to make that template. And to do so, I will cut it with the CNC. As usual, I use Aspire to do it. This is quite easy. After drawing the circles, I select them and go to the Profile Toolpaths tab. Make sure I have the right depth cut that I cut inside the shape and to make sure that the round will be perfect, I will use leads. Then I just need to calculate this and here's the result. This is exactly the template I have in the end. But before I use this template on my nice wood, I make a test. I see that it's exactly what I want. So I can use this template on my nice maple. And to cut this, I just need to align the line I made on the template with the central line of my piece and stick them together with double-sided tape and cut the cup holder holes. Now that this is done, I can cut the sliders to the right length. And glue them in place. Even if this is a sliding dovetail, I don't take any chances and clamp this while the glue dries. Now I need to wait for the glue to dry. The next morning, I can start working on the next pieces. I mark the length of the other part of the sliders and cut them. This is how this will work. This will be perfect. Now I need to cut the other pieces. And just like last time, I need to cut some pieces at 45 degrees. <laughs> but don't worry. My fingers are far from being near the saw blade. I want to keep them. After cutting them to the right length, I glue them in place. And as usual, I need to wait for the glue to dry before making them thinner with the drum sander. I also need to take care of the slats that will keep the book in place so I mark where I want them to be. When it's done, I drill some domino holes. Next, on the last plank, I mark the location where I want the indent to keep the book in place and cut them with the router. Then I rip this plank to the width of the slats. Cut it to the right length. And cut some tenons at the end with the panto router. And here's how this will look in the end. But first, I need to mark the location where I need to drill the holes for the brass book holder. Then I clamp this on a square block of wood and drill the holes. I also need to bend the brass rod. To help me, I heat it with a blowtorch. One thing for sure, when the brass is hot, it bends 
pretty easily. I just need to repeat all of this for the other 90 degree bends. But this was not my shiniest moment. I stopped watching the flame to pick up a sharpie and I burned my workbench. Not smart at all. Uh, but I still have to do a lot more. When it's done, I just need to cut the excess brass. And here's how this will look. Now I need to screw those pieces together. First thing to do is mark where the screws need to be and drill the holes. When they are all done on the sliders, I drill pilot holes for the rest. I assemble all of this with metal screws. Uh, in the end, I will use brass screws. But since brass screws can break easily, I prefer cutting the threads with metal screws. Here are the two bad Tom Caddy trays completely assembled. I still need to give them their final sanding. And I don't forget to polish the brass also. Now I'm almost ready to put the finish on. But before I do, I burn the date on the back. And now I'm ready to apply some oil. About 10 minutes later, I make sure I don't have excess oil by rubbing every piece with a clean rag. Now I wait for this to dry before applying a second coat. The next day, I'm finally ready to assemble both trays. But this time around, I use brass screws. To help me screw them, I put a little bit of wax on each one before I screw them in place. This helps a little bit. When I'm done with the screws, both bathtub caddies are finished. I just need to give them at Christmas. One to our son's girlfriend and the other one to our daughter. Merci beaucoup! These are the two bad top caddy trays I made last Christmas. Maybe I've inspired you to build your own bad top caddy tray. And with sliding dovetails, everything stays in place and it can be adjusted to any width of bad top. I hope you were not too bored with this. For myself, I had a lot of fun while making it. And see you soon for another episode of the woodpecker.